Welcome back to another episode of Local Search Tuesdays. This week, I've got another awesome SEO presentation to share with you. A few weeks ago, I took a quick day trip out to Vegas to present a session on SEO at the NIADA convention, the National Independent Automobile Dealers Association. Really, I just used it as an excuse to eat at my second favorite breakfast spot. If you're curious about my favorite breakfast spot, tune in to the episode in two weeks. It'll definitely get a shout out. I'm actually eating breakfast there today in Seattle. Yes, actually today, July 12th, 2022. But really, I was out in Vegas to help used car dealers understand more about SEO and why it's important. Even though I was the last session of the conference, the crowd was packed in and it was one of the highest rated sessions at the entire conference. I'm sharing the entire presentation with you today, so this episode will be a bit longer than usual. Get ready, we're diving in. This is how to use SEO in your Google business profile to dominate local search results. I'm Greg, but you already know that because you're watching this on my weekly video series. But for those of you that don't know, I'm lucky enough to get to speak at conferences all over the world. And sometimes at these conferences, you end up seeing some speakers that aren't so great at speaking. They've got great info to share, but they're just a bit boring to watch on stage. And a lot of times they're going to stand behind the podium the entire time with their back kind of to the crowd because they keep referring back to their own slides and even worse the background of the slides is plain white with black aerial font and it's packed with bullet points on every slide so they're just sitting there reading bullet points and that's no fun for anybody so i firmly believe that bullet points kill kittens and today's presentation will be entirely kitten safe and you saw the fast and the furious reference there at the beginning i am a massive massive movie nut you probably know that from watching past videos in the series but I've got a full sleeve of movie portrait tattoos on my right arm, a full sleeve of Goonies tattoos on my right leg, and a 95% finished sleeve of movie portrait tattoos on my left arm. So I like to share my love of movies with my love of talking about digital marketing. So there's always a theme. This time the theme is car movies. So any movies where cars played a major role in the plot of the movie. We've got 126 references to car movies with at least one movie for every year in the last 60 years. Now, if there's something obscure and you don't know what it is, there is attribution over to the side so that you can see what the movie is and have some cool movies to go watch later besides just learning some great stuff about SEO. So let's get this going. Why the long face? Are you spending too much time looking up at competitors that rank higher than you? Are you wondering, dude, where's my site? You might even feel like you're hanging on to your visibility for dear life or even that your competitors are murdering you in search results. So today I'm gonna to give you a peek underneath Google's hood so you'll understand how the algorithm works. In fact, I'm gonna share a lot of tips with you that are for your eyes only, so that you'll be able to get your sites to jump out and grab people's attentions. And just like a fat guy in a little coat, I'm gonna squeeze in a ton of stuff because I gotta do 150 slides in like the next 25 to 30 minutes. I've been helping car dealers with SEO and increased visibility in online searches for a decade and a half. And I actually started out working with specifically only used car dealerships. And SEO can really help you dominate those new car guys in town and other independent competitors because you're going to win in the local search results if you do good SEO. But most used car dealers don't do SEO which is pretty crazy considering that SEO is literally any dealership's most important marketing channel. Because in today's world, every sale is going to start with a search online. In most markets, customers don't really use third-party sites to find cars. Now, sure, sometimes you're looking for something really specific and you can't find it locally, so you're gonna go to Auto Trader or Cars or Car Gurus or a site like that. But typically, customers want to buy from a local dealership. Now, obviously, again, in today's world where there's not as much inventory, people might gravitate to the third parties a bit if they can't find what they're looking for. But if what they're looking for is available in the local area, they are going to go to the local dealership. So in today's world, in this post-COVID landscape, if you're not showing up well in local search results, you're going to lose. Because you have to remember, you're not just trying to beat a couple of other independent dealerships. You're trying to beat every dealership in the market, both new and used car dealers. And we know that customers shop around. 
There's been tons of research over the years that shows that the more expensive an item is, the more that user will do research before buying that particular product or service. So we know with car dealers, they're selling cars, that's expensive, people are gonna do some research, they're not just gonna to go to Google and buy from the first dealership that they find. So the way that you win is to have the best answer on your site to the question that that customer or potential customer is asking, which means you need an awesome website experience as well so people will remember you and come back to you. And SEO isn't cheap, so you need to stop buying SEO by just simply choosing the cheapest vendor out there because you get what you pay for. With SEO, you are paying for people to sit there and do the work. It's not really that hard to do SEO, but it does take time and it takes effort and that's what you're paying for. So if you're paying less, you're gonna be getting less. And SEO isn't something that you can do for a little bit and then stop. It never stops. SEO is literally optimizing your digital footprint so that Google sees you as a better answer to the questions that potential customers are asking. And if you are not pushing out those signals constantly, then Google's gonna see other people as better answers and you're going to drop out of search results. So it literally is like a king of the hill situation. If you stop optimizing those important signals, there's nowhere to go but down. If we wanna use an automotive metaphor, doing SEO is kinda of like owning a car. Even after you've finished paying that car off and you own it outright, you still have to put time and effort and money into maintaining that car so it continues to run because if you don't put gas in it, you don't fill your tires up, you don't do oil changes, then the car is going to break and it's not going to go anywhere. When it comes to SEO, it's important to understand how to judge success the right way. So you need to stop obsessing about how you rank for a handful of vanity keywords. Most importantly, because customers don't see the same search results that your rank tracking program sees. Customers' results will be different based on their physical location in the real world when they do their search and on personalization based on past searches that they have made, which means every customer is going to see slightly different results. And that rank tracking program doesn't even actually conduct search result, get search results from that particular local area. It's a bank of computers somewhere trying to spoof a location. Success in SEO really means you're getting more organic traffic and more inbound leads to the site. And you shouldn't be optimizing or even worrying about near me searches. We're seeing a lot of people lately that are putting pages on their sites that'll say something like, are you looking for a used car dealer near me? Because they think they're gonna show up better for searches that include the phrase near me. But customers don't really search that way. People don't look for a used car dealer near me. They look for a used car dealer in a particular city. And if a customer did happen to search for a used car dealer near me, that doesn't mean Google's going to show the dealers that have near me in the text on the page. As soon as a person says near me, that shows Google their intent, which is I need a car dealer that is close to my physical location when I'm conducting the search. In which case, you're only going to show up if you're close to their physical location. So stop writing janky content like near me content. Most independents don't have someone on staff that can handle SEO. They don't have an SEO staff member or even an internet manager that has the time to work on SEO. But if you are a dealership that does have someone in-house, I'm going to show you exactly what you need to do in this presentation. But if you're working with a vendor, which is a little bit more common, you're gonna know more about how this stuff works. So you'll know what to look for in that vendor partner, whether you wanna hold your current vendor accountable to see if they're actually helping, or if you're out searching for a new vendor, you'll have a better understanding so you'll be able to choose the right vendor that can help your dealership. But keep in mind when it comes to SEO, there are no silver bullets. SEO is not one thing that works. You can't pick one of these things out and go back and do it and hope to achieve results. Optimizing works because of the cumulative effect of all of the signals together over time. If we boil Google down to the simplest concept, Google's really just a very advanced pattern detection program. It literally just looks at websites and classifies the patterns on those websites. So when we're doing SEO, we're improving your website's pattern. We're giving your website a more favorable pattern so that you will be seen by Google as a better answer to the questions 
that potential customers are asking, which means you'll show up higher in search results. The problem is in automotive, most SEO vendors, and even outside of automotive, most SEO vendors just do traditional SEO where there's no geographic focus. But car dealers actually need local SEO where you are optimizing to show up in a particular geographic area. If we were gonna graph out the signals that Google's different algorithms look at and look at regular SEO versus local SEO, there is a lot of overlap in the signals that matter, but doing local SEO is going to give you much more benefit. If we did it like a Venn diagram, it would look like this. So only the little bit in green where the overlap is, is gonna truly be benefiting your dealership if you're doing regular SEO, but if you're doing local SEO, 100% of the effort is going to help your dealership. And the reason that it works that way, the local algorithm is literally a different algorithm and it is more complex than Google's traditional algorithm. It looks at additional signals that don't matter for Google's regular search algorithm. And how do I know this? Well, we can do a couple of really easy tests to see. Any searches related to car dealers are automatically localized. So look at this search right here. I just searched for used car dealer and I get the map pack, which is the three results with the map to the side. Now, in this case, there's four because someone bought an ad in the map pack. But anytime you see that map pack, it is the clearest indication that Google says that search has local intent and it's going to use the local algorithm to return those search results. So let's go beyond that and talk about all of the places that the local algorithm powers search results. So most obviously the map pack, whenever you see the map pack, you know that that is the local algorithm at play. But then at the bottom, you can click more places to go beyond the top three. And it takes you to what we call the local finder page. So this goes beyond just the top three and shows you every business that matches your search query in the area. You could also go directly to Google Maps. And in Google Maps, it's an even tighter search radius because there is even more clear local intent. So it looks very similar to the local finder page, but it's a little bit more dialed in to your physical location in the real world. But then below the map pack in the standard organic results, it's actually not standard organic results. Those results are localized and powered by the local algorithm as well. If you need help understanding how local search works, this video is great. You can watch this again later and it explains the same thing, but I like to use pizza delivery as an easy to understand example. If you're sitting at the dealership and you type two words into Google, pizza delivery, you get a list of all the pizza spots that are right there by the dealership. But then if you go home tonight and try the same search at home with the same two words, you'd get totally different search results. Now, it makes sense. You need a pizza delivered from nearby, but if you think about it, you type the same phrase in but based on the location that you were in, you got different search results. You didn't type in a city, you didn't type in a neighborhood, you didn't type in near me or nearby, but you got different search results. That's because Google knows that this search has local intent and it's gonna use the local algorithm, which is going to pay some attention to where you are in the real world when you do that search. So that explains how it works. This video helps explain why it's necessary. So if we were to use the car dealer example, let's say there are five new car dealers and 15 used car dealers in your town. That gives us 20 dealerships. There's only 13 spots on page one of Google. So you've got three spots in the map pack and 10 spots in organic. But if we take the auto traders and the cars.coms out of that, typically that results in about seven or eight spots that a dealership could show up on page one of search results. So if there's 20 dealerships in town and only eight spots on page one, that's 12 people that don't show on page one. And there's only 10 slots on page two, which means two dealerships are all the way back on page three where they're never going to be seen. And that's a very basic example with only 20 dealerships in a market, but a lot of you are in bigger markets and big metro areas. There may be 200 dealerships fighting for those used car dealer type phrases. So you gotta be doing SEO if you wanna show up and win. What you really need to pay attention to is a study that happens every year called the Local Search Ranking Factors Study. And what they do is they take the top 40 experts across the globe in local search, the people that are in this day in and day out and doing all kinds of research and that know what works and what doesn't work. And they send out a pretty intensive survey about positive factors, negative factors, et cetera, and aggregate all of those answers. Because if you were to put five SEOs in a room and have them optimize your site, they would all do it differently. But there'd be a lot of overlap 
in the elements that those SEOs were touching on your site, because those SEOs all know what Google's algorithm is looking at. So from a tactical standpoint, there's going to be a lot of overlap. That's the thought process behind this study. If you take all of the answers from these top experts and aggregate them, you get a pretty good handle on the signals that matter. So you get two pie charts. The first pie chart shows you the factors that matter for showing up in the map pack or in Google Maps. And the second one shows you the factors that matter for showing up in the localized organic or standard organic search results. So I'm going to go through the important elements here so that you'll have a better understanding of how to optimize each of these. Now we're going to start with talking about on-site signals, which is the content on your site and how that content is optimized. The quality of your content is what matters, not the quantity. A lot of vendors have come to equate giving you content or giving you blog posts with doing SEO and that's literally all they do. That's not doing SEO, that's doing content. Google doesn't care how much content you have. Google cares about the quality of the content that's on your site. You need to make sure that your content is actually about your dealership and actually about the local area. And here's where most dealers really screw up. It's the same generic content that's on every other dealership site in the market. And that's where you really need to stand out by proving to people why they should shop from you and not from your competitors. Because we know that people are looking at your competitors. So you have to stand out, you have to be memorable, and you can't have that default generic boring content on your site. One really easy way to test your content, take your homepage content or your about us page content, change everything except, or actually, I'm sorry, don't change anything except the name of your dealership in the city that you're in. Everything else stays the same. Could you then take that homepage content and put it on a used car dealership's website on the other side of the country? Does it still work? Because if it still works, only changing the city that you're in and the name of the dealership, that means that content wasn't really truly about your dealership and it was pretty generic. Another great way to test your content is to read it out loud. Everything that's on your site should sound conversational, like something that you would say face-to-face -to, -face to a customer that just walked in the front door of your dealership. When you read it out loud, you catch the things that are more keyword stuffy or more marketing jargon that your brain thinks is okay when you read it, but when you actually speak it out loud, it sounds awkward. Make sure that everything sounds like something that you would personally say to a customer that just walked in the front door. And again, boiling down to simple concepts. If you wanna show up as a search result, when somebody types a particular search phrase into Google, then you need a page of content on your website that's about that concept. And that page needs to be the best answer in the local area to that question that the searcher is asking. So that's where a lot of dealerships screw up is they'll have one page for the homepage and one page for about us and then everything else is just their cars and they don't talk about the fact that maybe even though you are an independent, maybe you do service, which means you need all the service content on your site or you serve subprime customers and you need subprime financing content on your site. So make sure whatever you wanna show up for, you've got a page of content on your site. It's about that concept. And then once you've written the awesome content that's about that concept, that's the best answer in the local area, that's all about your dealership and all about the local area, you need to optimize it for Google. Because Google's like a curious child. It knows a little bit, but it wants to know more. So if you hold Google's hand and make everything painfully obvious, then you do better in search results. So I'm gonna walk you through the elements on the page that you need to optimize when you're working on the on-site signals part of your SEO strategy. So the first being the title tag. It's the little tab above where you type in the URL. It's a summary of the page. It's also typically what populates your blue text when you show up as a search result in Google. So you need your targeted keyword phrase in your city and state abbreviation. Now, when I say targeted keyword phrase and city across each of these elements on the page, it's the same phrase in the same city every time. Don't mix them up. It needs to be the same in each of these elements. So title tag number one, don't put your dealership name first either. You are the only dealership name that you'll always rank number one for searches for that phrase. So spend that valuable optimization space on the keyword phrase that you're trying to optimize that page around. The second most important element on the page is the H1 heading. That's the big thick headline above the text area on the page. Can you have more than one? Sure, but that's wrong. You should only have one H1 heading on the page. It should be a little bit more conversational than your title tag. It should have the same keyword phrase and location phrase in the H1 heading. It should be in the page content as well, but if you've really written content that's all about you and why you're awesome and all about the local area, then 
you're probably going to have that phrasing in there and you won't have to optimize too much there. All the website platforms allow you to set custom URLs for the internal pages of your site. So add those keywords in and make those pages better for humans and for Google. Always use dashes to separate your words in URLs as well because Google sees an underscore as a character but a dash as a space. So while it might read a little bit easier for human eyes to have that underscore there, you want to use dashes to separate your words. Image alt text is another important area that needs to be optimized, and it's something that most dealers and most marketers don't do anything with. So years ago, Google couldn't tell what was in an image, so alt text is in the embed code, and it's a descriptor for the image. Well, Google can tell what's in an image now through machine learning, but the alt text is still part of the algorithm, so it's a great way to add additional relevancy when a lot of other people aren't doing that. And finally, the meta description is important to optimize. And now this is behind the scenes code, so you don't see it on the page, but it's what populates those couple of gray sentences underneath your blue link when you show up as a search result in Google. Now, this doesn't have any play in ranking, so you don't have to worry about stuffing keywords, but if you have the important keyword phrase and the city and state there and someone searches for that, it gets bolded in the meta description and helps you potentially get more click through. So approach it more like an ad and write something compelling. When you're optimizing, you also wanna make sure you're optimizing for the way that customers actually search and don't use dealership jargon. We all understand the terminology that's specific to automotive, but customers don't. My favorite example here is used cars versus pre-owned vehicles. Dealers love to say that they sell pre-owned vehicles because it sounds nicer than used cars, but customers don't search for pre-owned vehicles. They search for used cars. In fact, if I use Google Ads, keyword preview tool, we can see that there is an average monthly search volume of 2,900 searches a month across the entire country for pre-owned vehicles, but there are 823,000 searches a month for used cars. So you want to optimize for how people are searching so you don't miss out on all of that search volume. You also need a blog. It is not a luxury. It is something you absolutely need and you need to post on a regular basis because there's a difference between the kind of content that's in the main section of your site and the kind of content that's on your blog. The main section of your site, the primary menu button pages, those are bottom of the funnel content pages. Those are pages that are meant to show up and get someone to convert. Blog content is more discovery or informational content. It is meant for mid to early level funnel visitors, people that are starting their research phase. You wanna get eyeballs on your website as early as possible so that you're more likely to be in consideration that's what the blog content is for. In fact, you can make your blog a local destination and be noticed by potential customers before they're looking to buy. Now, what do I mean by this? Share helpful, useful, cool information about the local area, and that's gonna show up in search results for people that are looking for information about the local area. If everything on the site was only about selling cars, or if you have service, selling cars and doing service, that's a really narrow focus on the potential local audience that you could reach. So if you share interesting information just about the local area, that gets more people on your website, which is more eyeballs on your brand, which is more likelihood that you will be in consideration when that person needs to buy in the future. Think of it like a billboard. You don't put a billboard up expecting that everyone that sees the billboard is going to buy a car from you. You put it up for brand awareness and brand building. It's the same thing with localized blog content. In fact, for the dealers that we work with, one blog post every month at a minimum is just about the local area to help build that local relevancy. Now, if you haven't done this before and you need some ideas, I've got a video here that outlines 10 different concepts that you can use as a springboard for awesome localized content. So check that out for sure. Also, dealers love to show up in nearby cities or love to try to show up in nearby cities to expand their reach. But it's really important to understand that if you don't own your backyard first, you're not going to show up in those other cities. So what do I mean by that? If you don't have strong enough SEO to dominate the search results in the town where you're actually located, then you're probably not going to be showing up in nearby towns because your real world location of the dealership is a huge factor in how you're going to show up in search results. So if you're not showing up well where you actually have an address, you don't have much of a hope of showing up where you don't have an address. So watch this video. It's a really important concept to understand. If we're looking at other factors as well, moving on, links are incredibly important. This is a link 
from another website that points to your dealership site. It's very weighted in the algorithm. And it's not just a numbers game. Back in the day, it's whoever had the most links was going to rank number one. But now those links must be relevant. There has to be a reason for that other site to link to your dealership site. And because we're talking about the local algorithm, we want those links to come from local websites and local entities. So the easiest way to get those links is to get involved in the local community, which most car dealerships are fairly involved in the local community. So just follow up and it's pretty easy to get those links. Now, keep in mind that acquiring links is pretty difficult, mainly because it's a very time consuming process. So typically you're going to need an SEO partner to help you with link acquisition, unless you just have a larger dealership and a dedicated SEO employee, you're probably gonna need help here. But if you need some ideas for local links, I've got an awesome video that walks you through different ideas for local links. But keep in mind, if you're involved in the local community, just make sure that you're doing the follow-up and asking for those links. So that's the most important part of link acquisition is just the follow-up to make sure that you get the links. But let's move on and talk about customer reviews, which are obviously important to attract new customers, but they're also weighted in Google's local algorithm. And a lot of dealers like to put a testimonials page on their site, but look at your analytics. Nobody's using that page except maybe your own staff trying to show customers how much people love you because honestly, customers don't care. They know that that testimonials page is only going to show the best of the best five-star reviews that are telling everyone how amazing you are. Think about how you shop. You're going to go right to the negative reviews and read those. Customers want to read honest, unbiased reviews on third-party sites so that testimonials page doesn't do much for you. So instead, you need a really solid, proactive review process. Watch this video. It walks you through it, but I'm going to pull a couple of important points out. The most important point is you got to make it easy for people to leave a review. You can't expect that people can figure out where to go. So have links on your site and make sure you ask every single customer. It's not human nature to leave a review when you have a positive experience, but if you're asked to, you're more likely to leave that positive review. You want to get more reviews than your competitors, but not too many more, because if you've got two or three times as many reviews as every other competitor in town, human nature is going to make people think that you're cheating. So it's a delicate balance of maintaining more reviews than competitors, but not exponentially more. Remember, you're selling used cars. So when you're selling used cars, you're more likely to get some bad reviews. So keep that in mind especially the cheaper your inventory skews. If you're a buy here, pay here, you're gonna get significantly more bad reviews than someone that's selling all used BMWs that are only a year or two old. But don't stress out. Bad reviews actually help make you look more legitimate. Now, obviously you don't want a lot of bad reviews, but one or two here or there actually make you look more real. So a lot of research has been done to show that you don't actually want a perfect review score because you look realistic, you look like you're not cheating. You wanna make sure you respond to every single review as well, not just the good reviews, or on the other side, not just the bad reviews. Respond to every single review. Now, if you get a bad review from somebody that you know wasn't a customer, Google's probably not gonna remove that review just because you say that it wasn't a customer. Unless that review violates the restricted content policy, Google's not taking it down. So your best option is to leave a strategic response. This video walks you through how to do it. And that way the bad review isn't going to do damage to you in the future. So let's finish up with Google business profiles, or like most of us are still going to call it Google My Business, at least for the next few years. It's your new home page. People don't have to go to your site to get your phone number or your address or see photos or any of those things anymore. They can do that all in the search results page in your Google business profile. So it's literally the first impression that you're going to make with potential customers. Your Google business profile is also what allows your dealership to show up in Google Maps or to show up in the map pack as a search result. So you want to make sure that you're filling out everything that you can fill out. Don't add any extra keywords to your dealership name. You can get suspended if you do this. You also want to make sure that you add UTM tracking to your website link because Google Analytics attribution is broken. A lot of times mobile devices will not pass referral information. So Google Analytics will drop that traffic into the direct bucket instead of organic. So if you add UTM tracking, watch that video there, it will explain what to do. Then it helps you correctly attribute everything as organic traffic in Google Analytics. You wanna make sure that your phone number has a local area code. That's a big important signal to Google. That doesn't mean you can't do call tracking though. In fact, you should do call tracking on your Google business profile, but get a call tracking number that has a local area code 
and then put that tracking number as your primary number and your actual local number as an alternate number. Now the alternate isn't gonna show to the public, but it lets Google see consistency among all of the different places that your phone number is listed if you've got that unique tracking number listed in Google. It's important to select the right categories as well. The categories that you pick have a pretty big influence on the searches that you're going to show up for. Now, a lot of people will have problems with their Google business profile. They might get suspended for doing something uh, outside the norm, or you know, you may have a service department, so you're trying to set up that service department, Google business profile, separate department category. And Google business profile support kind of sucks. So instead, you want to go to the public forum. It is a public forum staffed by volunteers, but when a volunteer has answered things consistently well over time, they get invited to be in the product expert program, which gives them a little badge. So you know if a product expert answers your question, it's somebody that knows their stuff. And if someone is gold or platinum level, they'll be able to escalate your problem directly to the internal Google business profile team and just skip support altogether. So if you're ever having problems, this is the place that you wanna to go to get help. You wanna make sure that you're uploading high resolution photos as well. You wanna make sure you're using Google Posts. Watch this video, it's a 15 minute long video that I did for Moz's Whiteboard Friday video series. It is all about Google Posts. It packs in a ton of information. I do wanna pull out a couple of important points though. They're basically free ads. Don't approach them like social media. They are free advertisements that appear in search results and you should approach them as such. When you post the social fluff like delivery photos or hey, happy 4th of July or the same kind of junk that you would post on social, they are not effective and they won't do anything for you. They should always be promotional. If it's not something compelling, no one's going to click on it. And most dealers only pay attention to the content of the full post, but you've got to realize no one's gonna see the content of the full post if they don't click on the little thumbnail first. So the thumbnail has to be compelling. If the thumbnail doesn't have an awesome eye-catching image, and if the little blurb of text isn't compelling, no one's gonna click on it, which means nobody's gonna see the full post, which means nothing's gonna happen. Now, you wanna make sure you don't crop out text from your image or any important image elements that are in that thumbnail, like the bottom half of your car but it's tough because cropping is super wonky. So I've created a Google post cropping guide. You can download the PSD at this link right here. And the PSD is going to look like this. Anything that's within the white grid is going to be safe. And that's what's going to show in the post thumbnail and everything else will appear once they've clicked the thumbnail and they see the full post. You should also be paying attention to the Google business profile questions and answers section. It's been there for a while, but most people don't realize it's there. And it allows anybody to ask you a question and any random person can answer that question for you. Customers think that it's instant messaging, but it's actually a community discussion feature. So customers using it think that somebody's sitting there on the other end waiting to answer their question, but really it's just meant for the community to share information about the business. What's really cool is you're allowed to ask your own questions. So set up a pre-site FAQ page, take all those common questions, load them into the questions and answers section in your Google business profile, and then answer those questions yourself. So it's a better first impression experience for potential customers. The reason it's a better experience, as someone clicks the ask a question button and starts to type in a question, Google will auto complete the question and provide an automatic answer to the question as they're typing if a similar question has been asked and answered in the past. So let's look at a couple of fun examples. We see this all the time, even though the ask a question button is very close to the phone nail or phone number for the dealership, or they could click the button to go to the website and get the phone number off of the website. We see questions like this. Hey, what's your phone number? I've got an overheating engine because they think it's chat because typically they're too lazy to check the phone number in the other spots. And notice the dealership didn't answer this question. Or this was one of your website sucks. And somebody said, yeah, I'm not a fan of it either, which we all laugh at, but probably a good sign that you need to give your love to your website, make it a little bit better. This was a fun one. I was doing an event in Austin, so I pulled up a local example, and the question was, does South Point have a body shop? And the answer was, don't go here. Look at the reviews. I had a horrible experience with them. They lie to you and everybody else. But notice, there's six more answers to the question. And when the dealership answers, it has the name of the dealership, and it says owner, and this is a much better answer to the question. But if we look, 
the other one had a thumbs up. So answers work on a likability gamification score. So whichever answer has the most thumbs up is the answer that's going to show as primary. So we fixed this for the dealership really quickly. We just grabbed three people in the front row because this guy was actually in the room. So we grabbed three people on the front row, had them go like the dealership answer, and immediately this became the answer that showed as the primary answer to the question. This was for a hotel in Boston where I did a conference, and it was an old building, and the room numbers were not making much sense. The hallways were very twisty. So someone actually answered how the room numbers ordered. And this guy says alphabetically. And we all laugh at that. But again, not a great first impression experience. And this is my all-time favorite example. It's for the London Eye, the big Ferris wheel on the Thames River in London. Now this answer has since been changed because the guy thinks he's a comedian. But the original question was, do you have to wear a helmet? And the guy said, you don't have to. You can if you wish. I believe Viking helmets are a popular choice. What you want to do is load in all your own common questions and answer all of your questions and monitor the Q&A section to make sure that your dealership answers are always upvoted to be the primary answers so that you have an awesome pre-site FAQ experience just like this. So thanks for taking that crazy ride with me today. Now I've given you the key to success when it comes to your Google business profile and your SEO efforts. So now when you're thinking about your visibility and search results, you're not gonna wanna jump off a cliff because you're gonna be winning the race to the top of local search results. So that was how to use SEO and your Google business profile to dominate local search results. There's my email address. If you have any questions, you can always email me. I've got an open email policy, so I'll always answer and try to help. And if you'd like the slides, I'd be happy to send you a copy of the slides. And as always at the end, there is a list of all the movies by order of release date. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much for sticking with me for the whole presentation. That's definitely all the time we've got left for this week's episode, so you know what that means. Put your hand on the screen right here. We totally just high-fived because you learned something awesome. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next week for another episode of Local Search Tuesdays.